Welcome to a series called Firing by the Fire, where we're going through the book of Acts, verse by verse, to see what it is the church should really be doing, not what we see today, because what we see today isn't written anywhere within the book of Acts in the first church. So what is it that the church was doing uh, that's so incredibly different? Well, a lot of it is, one, they were going through tribulation, so it was you know, a constant fight. They had to lean on to the Holy Spirit to guide them. Um, they spoke in boldness. They did not fear imprisonment. Uh, they were focused on the kingdom of heaven, not their own kingdom here on this earth like we see today. So where we are is uh, Peter, had just healed a lame man at the temple through the whole through the power of Jesus Christ and then is preaching who Jesus Christ is his death by their murder and then their resurrection then his resurrection to prove that he is God to redeem mankind and of course that's very offensive to the temple priests so they lay hands on them and they imprison them and that's where we're at now. And Peter then through the Holy Spirit declares who, again who Jesus Christ is uh, through boldness because of who he is in Jesus Christ. Whew. Smoke right in the face. All right, so we're gonna pick it up there. Acts four, starting verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. And they realized that they had been with Jesus and seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves saying, what shall we do to these men? For indeed that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem and we cannot deny it. But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this name. All right, I'm going to pause right there because ultimately what you have going on here is you have a situation where they recognize the miracle and they know that everybody else sees the miracle as well and that this miracle can't be hidden and that they can't deny the miracle either. Um, I think that's what's so incredibly beautiful about this particular miracle is that the man was lame from his mother's womb. And daily he was outside the temple. So everybody knew who he was. And he's a grown man at this point. So we're talking at least a couple decades of him sitting outside this temple or people at least being familiar with who he is. And they heal him and they declare who healed him. It was Jesus Christ who healed him and his faith in the healing itself. And that it is them who murdered Jesus Christ. And, but because of that prophecy was fulfilled and he redeemed mankind and he was raised from the dead. And they didn't see any of this. Like, like they just, in, in their eyes, what they see is, all right, well, clearly this happens. So now let's threaten them to shut them up so they no longer preach in this name. So I wanna take a moment and say, this is clearly how it's gonna look like, because this is what tribulation looks like. You got the religious folks who will be worshiping the Antichrist, and then there'll be a few who will stand there and say, this is not who God is. And there'll be some that'll do it literally in the temple too, just like they did. But yet, at the very least, they're gonna be threatened, at the very least. But there's gonna be a point where they will be imprisoned uh, you know, we could just follow their path. It's very similar because at first they're like, whoa, you're talking crazy. Let's just threaten them, get them out of here, get them to shut up. But when they find out that you don't shut up, it, it, go, it gets a lot worse from there. So let's keep going. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. But when Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what had been done. 
for the man was over 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. God has a way of taking his miracles to glorify and advance the kingdom of heaven through you. And this is what just took place through Peter is this moment in time where God is being glorified. Many are saved. They're preaching and professing Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. People are being healed. And it's all happening in the face of adversity and threats of violence and imprisonment. And this is something that you got to see is how God works. This is how he works. Because what we're not seeing is we're not seeing miracles in the church today, necessarily. I don't want to say we're not at all seeing them, but not like this, not on a regular basis. Uh, you know, every now and then you'll see somebody in church and they had cancer and everybody prayed over them and they were healed. That's awesome. But not like this, not on a regular basis. Not where they're just walking up to people who can't walk and say, now rise in the name of Jesus and they just get up. Not like people just growing arms that are cut off or ears that have been cut off. Or people being raised from the dead. We're not seeing that on a regular basis. And unfortunately, maybe it takes a little adversity to make a person be more bold because I mean, we see that kind of thing in Africa and Asia and Indonesia and all over those Muslim countries in the Middle East and the islands, they're, they're, they're Christians are being persecuted and killed and threatened to go to jail, but yet there's massive miracles everywhere because the more adversity that's laid on to a man or woman of God, the more bold they become in the Holy Spirit. And it's sad that it has to be that way, but I think you all know it has to be that way because you're a lot closer to God when things are bad and you're less close to him when things are good. It's not his fault it's that way. It's our fault it's that way.